Baseball fans mourning the passing today of a larger-than-life personality, George Steinbrenner. For a look at how the boss was a game-changer when it came to the business of baseball, let's bring in Vince Gennaro. He is the author of Diamond Dollars, The Economics of Winning in Baseball. Vince Gennaro, also a consultant to Major League Baseball teams and a member of the Society of American Baseball Research. We also have Hugo Lindgren, who covers baseball for Bloomberg Business Week. Gentlemen, welcome. So, uh, Vince, tell me about George. George Steinbrenner. We were talking during the break that you, in the few times that you met him, same person in private as the hard-charging public face of the Yankees. Yes, absolutely, Pam. I mean, I didn't sense that it, there was any public versus private persona. It was really all the same. And this is a guy who, who had, was more passionate about winning than probably any other owner in professional sports. And really, when you translate passion into the business world, it really means passion for winning really means customer focus, because that's what fans want. Hugo Lindgren, he also had a passion for the media. Was he sort of one of the first owners of a baseball team to really figure out how to use the public eye? Because he conducted a lot of his feuds and a lot of his passions in public. He sure did. I don't know if he was the first. Certainly Charlie Finley sort of had that down in the years before him. But, you know, he wasn't afraid to play the villain. He didn't mind getting kicked around in the newspapers. Um, and I think for fans, it, it was just sort of part of the entertainment. I mean, Yankee fans were often angry with him, but also grateful to him for all the, you know, for all the championships he brought to New York. Too. Vince, talk about the business of baseball and what George Steinbrenner did for the franchise, the Yankees, and also how he changed the game. Well, you're right. In fact, his impact goes well beyond the Yankees. The Yankee fans were the benefactors, particularly the last 15 years, with the tremendous run that he made here in New York with five world championships. But, but besides that, he really rewrote the rules of how teams compete. The essence of Major League Baseball, different from football or basketball, is you earn the money at the local level, at the team level, and you keep that money. Yes, there's revenue sharing, but it's relatively small. So Steinbrenner realized that he could field a higher payroll team because he had the power in his market with his resourcefulness to generate revenues, and that's what really changed the game. Hugo Lundgren? What about the change that it's affected other teams? Does it make it less competitive? You know, I think it does. But um, but on the other hand, you know, as Billy Bean has shown in Oakland, you know, smarts can beat big money too. So I think um, I, th I think it just it, it raises the stakes. I mean, the, the the good thing about George Steinbrenner is that he just went for it. He used his advantage. Other teams have to use their advantage, whatever that might be. So. Vince, was he an unlikely uh, success story and when it comes to baseball? I mean, because his background, scrap steel business, shipbuilding. There was no baseball in there. No, you're right. It, it, and it shows you that some of these traits that make people successful in business are very transferable and translatable to a lot of different things, including, including the business world of, of sports. And, and baseball is no exception, and, and, and particularly baseball, because it's the more Darwinian business model where the survival of the fittest, it's, and, and I think that played very well to Steinbrenner's strengths. Any salary caps in the future of baseball? I don't think we're going to see that. There's too many complications with bringing it to be, including, of course, the negotiations with the union and all the other constituencies. But for all the issues that baseball is purported to have with the salary differential, I don't expect to see that. Hugo Lindgren, what about the actual value of baseball franchises now? I mean, did George Steinbrenner turn the owner into the star as well? Well, I don't know if he was ever the star, but I will say, I mean, when you consider that he bought the team for less than $10 million in the early 70s, I mean, it was really one of the greatest... Bought it from Bill Paley, right, of CBS? Yeah, one of the greatest bottom fishing expeditions of all time. Mm -hmm. And um, and now what's the team worth? I mean, it, it's got to be over a billion dollars. I mean, they, they, they have an incredibly lucrative franchise. So not only did he win, he built, you know, the preeminent... Sort Sort of sports business model in, the, in probably in the world. Vince, uh, Diamond Dollars, uh, the book that you've written about the economics of winning in baseball, what is, uh, is there one challenge that many owners face that they don't seem to be able to get over? I mean, is there something that, that makes it more difficult nowadays to make money? Well, one of the real challenges is to be competitive over the long haul. You have to have a premier, best-in-class player development system. Because the players you develop internally are the ones that you have essentially as cheap labor for a long, a long period of time. But it takes time. So what you find is people start down that path and then they say, I'm impatient, I want to win today or tomorrow. And they plop money down for free agents when their business model and economics don't really justify it. And so then they get back upside down again. So the real issue is how do you build a fundamentally sound organization that can develop players and have a long-term plan? 
What about the actual ballpark itself? That seems to be an entertainment venue as much as a baseball venue. Are we going to see changes in the way ballparks are made? Well, I do think we're seeing the emergence of the baseball theme park, if you will. I mean, that's what baseball parks have become with kids zones and areas for all sorts of fans, a lot of themed areas. And I think that's a positive thing because it recognizes that not everyone's a diehard fan who's going to come nine times a year. There are your casual fans, and the way to get them out there is to make there more than just what's going on in the field. All right, I want to thank you very much. Vince Gennaro coming to us as the author of uh, Di Diamond Dollars, uh, The Economics of Winning in Baseball. Hugo Lindgren writes for baseball, writes on baseball for Bloomberg Businessweek following the sport. Thank you very much. Also